find me looking for you all through the night all through the day in this journey i'm on you're all i want all i Welcome to The Journey. Thank you for joining us. I'm Robin Durham, and my special guest with me in the studio today is Peggy Buttry. Some of you have seen Peggy. She is a Kalenite, which is so unusual. Welcome, and thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me, Robin. Peggy is a dear friend, has been a partner in ministry for a lot of years. Uh, she's an intercessor and um, just love to have her here today. She came in on short notice, and I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, it, I'm telling you, it's not everybody's forte to do television, so I've just told Peggy, just relax. Pretend we're driving down the road in the car, <laughs> as we usually are, praying, talking about the go. Word of God, interrupting one another, <laughs> shouting down one another, just a minute, just a minute. So we're just going to go today, and if a thought pops into your head, a scripture, you just tag on and we'll roll. Okay. Um, I want to talk for the next few weeks about boundaries. Um, the Lord has just been speaking to me for a number of months and then there's been confirmations. I even have a, a guest coming in soon that when we met for lunch, she just began to talk about the Lord talking to her about boundaries. And um, I just think the season that we're in, um, we have to uh, return to the boundaries that God has given us because there are so many um, voices Yes, yeah, you know, there's it's so true. many voices right out now. there right yeah. now that are shouting and, and some of them sound reasonable, but we have to be very, very careful that we're not pulled by our emotion and that the voice that we're listening to is the voice of God, yeah. even if it's difficult. That's where discernment comes in. It is. Absolutely. And we have to listen. Does this line up with scripture? Yes. And uh, Mary Carden, who we love, and she, Peggy and I are both part of Compass Regional Network and Mary's on the board of directors. Uh, she came in for the previous five weeks. And if you didn't watch mm. the journey, uh, please do, because I intentionally wanted her to come in before we got into this to kind of lay a foundation of where our nation has shifted to over the last 100 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, it really hasn't been that long, probably not even 100 years, but some of this did start in the late 1800s. Yeah. Some of the yeah. thought that we call progress progressivism or humanism, mm -hmm. humanistic thoughts, Darwinian thoughts yeah. uh, that of evolution, and just, um, schools of thought or philosophies that Paul warned about. Yeah. He said, you know, don't get entrenched or deceived by or in vain discussions on other philosophies. And yeah, I feel like, you know, even the church, and I think that's my biggest um, shock. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure all of us have areas that we still need correction in, yeah. in the Word of God, but you see it more and more all the time. So uh, Mary talked about <clears throat> the roots of progressivism and humanism, some of the leaders, some of the founders, uh, and how that has shifted the social norms, what we think is normal in society and what we lean into or adhere to. So um, things like the Word of God now is called hate speech. Mm. Um, uh, adhering to the Word of the Lord in the area of uh, marriage yeah. or yeah. abortion and other things as well. Um, has just become called intolerant. Yeah, that political correctness. It is. It's political correctness. And so we have to take a look at these things and watch out for our own souls. Um, I know I heard the Lord say, possess ye your soul last mm, week. Our soul yeah. is our mind, our will, and emotions. And the Lord said, you know, it's just kind of the same scripture of gird up the loins of your mind. We have to be careful that we are not subtly aligning with the world in the word of God. So um, 
you know, it is in times, and Paul warned that the Antichrist spirit would increase yeah. because this is Antichrist spirit. Socialism, humanism, uh, secularism is replacing Christ. That's what Antichrist means, not just in, it's instead of, it's not just against, it's Since, against God. Yeah. It's instead of God. It is. And it has become, uh, again, I say it's subtle. And I want us to look at Psalm 2. Uh, that's been my scripture uh, for quite a while with all of this. And I mean, we watch um, what's going on in our nation. You watch what's going on in the nations of the world. We're in a pivotal, pivotal time. I believe that God is giving us an opportunity for justice mm -hmm. to be restored and yeah. he's judging unjust things. And we're gonna have to be careful. Again, we get in the emotional realm when injustices have been done to yeah. us. Yeah. You know, and if we've had abuse in our life, we can easily align with abuse and get into an emotional realm and, and we need to forgive. Yeah. Bottom line, that's one of the biggest things. The very first thing, regardless of what kind of oppression any of us have been under, right. abuse any of us have been under, the way out of the pain, the way out of the, if it's anger, if it's grief, if it's sorrow, is first of all to forgive. Yeah, you, you know. saw that with the Kavanaugh mm -hmm. hearings. That's where a lot of people were they were seeing it through their own emotions. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that's, that's a real good example right there. It is, and I think that heightened, I know for me, that um, hearing, uh, as I watched it, it sent me into a place of intercession, and mm -hmm. Peggy knows this well because we pray together nearly every day, um, where I was identifying um, with uh, racism yeah. and repenting for racism and recognizing that uh, injustice, let's just say that, mm -hmm. such injustices have been done. False accu accusations, no day in court, let's just say African yeah. Americans for years, yes. uh, if, it, if they even got to court before they were lynched, um, their court cases were a mockery. Yeah. Okay, there yeah. was just accusation believed because of the color of skin. Without evidence. Without evidence. It was the same thing as I processed through intercession during that time and crying out for uh, our nation and God's justice and God's truth to prevail. Um, I also can identify with the Me Too movement. I can identify oh, with yeah. being abused. Absolutely. You know, so and most of us can. Peggy, I know you I can. Know, I have. Yeah. And I so I, I just want to say, you know, during that time, injustices have been done to women. Yes. You know, women didn't even get a vote till 1920. You know, women still don't in some arenas have the same voice. Yeah, and any time, especially the word of God is used to oppress a people group, which it was with women, which it was with African Americans and others. We aren't mm -hmm. the only two groups. No. I think that's something we must be careful of as well yeah. uh, because we do get into a victim mentality that everything is always because I'm a woman. Yes. You know, right. and we can't. So anyway, the way out of that is forgiveness. The way out Absolutely. of that is talking about mm -hmm. it and forgiving and moving on. And yes, we want to stand firm and see no more of this go on. But that whole scenario, uh, I pray, uh, will bring forth a fruit of righteousness yes. in this yes. nation. That if believers will allow the Spirit of God to begin to plow their hearts, you know, Absolutely. and deal. Because Peggy, you also know, I've been going through a season of what I call a Malachi three season. This God that you cry out for, he will come suddenly yes. and he comes with a refiner's fire and a fuller's brush. He's a purifier of silver and gold and he will purify the sons of Levi. I believe that all of these things that are going on in our nation right now are for the church yes. Yes. to be purified. Yes. Because definitely, First. I say this all the time, God's not looking at the world to get it right. Mm -mm. He's looking at us. He's looking at the church to get it right. Mm -hmm.
And we see, you know, as I've said in previous programs, we see a great divide going on even now in the church, aligning with the philosophies of the world and political correctness. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been divides in major denominations just this year and last year, or adhering to the Word of God. And the enemy wants to get us out of the protection of the boundaries of God. God's Word. Amen. His Word is a protection. His it Word is. is a boundary for us. It is. You you actually studied boundaries at one point in time and, and taught mm -hmm. on boundaries, didn't you? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, anytime... Speak up, Peg. Okay. God has given boundaries for nations. I think that's one of the first things yeah. we can see with his words. I love the first words that God spoke. He said, let there be light. And he separated night from day. That was a boundary. Mm -hmm. Day you will last this long. Night you will last this long. Mm -hmm. Then he created the boundary of dry land and water. He separated the sea and the, and the dry land. And God is a God of order and he spoke order and he even gave to Abraham. Let's look at Genesis. I never read Psalm 2. <laughs> we did not get there. Um, but let's just go to Genesis um, 15 where God set national boundaries for Israel. Mm -hmm. And for us, I believe it's uh, spiritual boundaries that his word has set. Yeah. Yes, we have national national boundaries. We have personal property where we have boundary lines on the property. That's right. You know, you and I own. We have fences. Yeah, we do. There are boundaries in marriage. God has set mm -hmm. some boundaries in marriage. He's set boundaries in relationship period. Uh, he has set uh, social boundaries. There is a way that we should behave toward our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, yeah. love the yeah. Lord your God with all your heart all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, but love your neighbor as yourself. Prefer, defer one another, yeah. to one another. That is just civility. So mm -hmm. there's boundaries. I mean, he's been showing me so many different boundaries, boundaries of time. He chose to set us in a time. And on the face of the earth, I often quote Acts 17, that he knows our geographical boundaries, the time we would be mm -hmm. here. And so he has set some boundaries yeah. for us. Psalm but, 16 says his boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite scriptures. It's true. And, and when we stay in those boundaries, Peggy, it says pleasant places. Yeah, pleasant we, places. we thrive yes. within our boundaries. We have authority within our boundaries. You know, we have joy, we have peace, yeah. life abundant within the restraint of God's word. And it is a restraint. That's what Psalm yeah. 2 said. It's like they, the nations rage and they want to throw off all restraint. They don't want any, any, anything govern them but their own thoughts and heart. So let's take a quick look at Genesis 15. Um, God had already come to Abraham and promised him uh, seed, if you'll remember. He promised him he'd have a son. Mm -hmm. He made a covenant with him in Genesis 12. But he comes back to him and he cuts a covenant with him in the first part uh, of Genesis 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is Ele Eleazar of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born of my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thy heir. So God cuts a covenant um, and he takes him forth abroad in verse five, he says, and he said, look toward the heaven and tell the stars if you're able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your seed be. Abraham mm -hmm. believed and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And then he, he um, cuts covenant with him in verses eight, um, through 12, Abraham goes down into a deep sleep. In 13, this is interesting. He says to Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land 
in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 mm -hmm. years and also that nation whom they sh serve will I judge and afterward they will come out with great substance. <coughs> so God knows the number of our days. He knows the things we'll go through but ultimately even that bondage that 400 year bondage of mm -hmm. being slaves, God promised they would come out and they would come out of it with more than what they had. Mm -hmm. They would come out of it prospering and hopefully trusting God. So, um, and then you'll go to your fathers in peace. And then that's in that same day in verse 18, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying unto thy seed have I given this land. And it's from the river of Egypt the great river to the river of the Euphrates. So he sets some boundaries and he says, that's your land, though there are inhabitants in your land right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you will walk in my ways, if you'll obey my voice, I will help you drive out the inhabitants of that land and you will walk into your possession. And that goes back to Abraham uh, 6 where he said, Abraham believed the Lord. Yeah, he believed. It does. He believed. Amen. That's, that's been a the, big thing, hasn't big, it? That's the big thing right now. Do we believe? Amen. The Abraham challenges believed. that are coming, and Peggy yeah. and I, we, we've been talking about this just recently. I think what's being challenged right now is our belief. Now, yeah. you know, our land encompasses personally a lot of things. It encompasses uh, God's promised us to prosper in our mm -hmm. health, be in good health, even as our soul prospers, mm -hmm. right back to believe in the Word of God. Um, so there are things, people are being challenged, I think right now, I know I have been in areas of finance, in areas of health, uh, maybe in relationships. And so do you- Things we see going on in our land. Yes, amen. You know, against what God has told us would happen. Amen. It looks totally different from what God said it was gonna do. And then all of a sudden it's going, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Do Lord, we believe? I, you've promised us some things, Father. Will we press on? Yeah. Will we believe? That's it. Uh, amen. And so I, I know the Lord spoke to me about a year ago. Peggy knows this. I've shared it a few times that it's time to possess. It's time to take the land is what yeah. I heard him say. And I heard him say that your enemies will be bred for you. And I knew anytime I hear the Lord speak, I take it first for me. Um, I didn't know how personal it would be all year long that there were giants in my land that maybe giants of yeah. intimidation, fear mm. of man, uh, whatever it was, fear of lack. I've watched the Lord um, bring liberty to me. Yeah. I, I can say today from a year ago that I am a, in a better place by reason of trial Amen. Um, Amen. in the yeah. area of believing God for finances right here in this station. Yeah. And <clears throat> I also feel in a much freer place um, in a boldness, I want to say, in an increase in uh, speaking God's word fearlessly. Now I can do this on TV. It's, <laughs> it's real easy to speak God's word fearlessly on TV. Yeah, yeah. It's another thing when you're face to face sometimes with uh, so fear of man. Yeah. And we must hand them the word of life. That's what we're here for. Exactly. But these social norms lots of times are what back us down the fear of looking intolerant, whatever it. it is, the that's the infiltration yeah. that I believe has come into the body of Christ. But even in the last um, couple of months at the most, I sent such an increase of the gifts of God mm -hmm. and the boldness of God. And there has been a, a willingness to share the truth in love, not mm -hmm. rudely, because you can do that. You can rudely, mm -hmm. uh, and you will get nowhere with rudeness. I, I mean, I don't- Slapping them with the Word of God? Yeah, slap them <laughs> with the Word of God. And so I'm just um, real conscious that the word that the Lord gave me a year ago, he has made some ground. And Amen. some of my enemies have become bread for me. Amen. He is still majorly working on most of us. Um, I want to share, I want to jump to something. I am talking about boundaries. Um, the Lord, um, 
wants us, he, he has given us boundaries to stay in in which we have authority. And the enemy tries to push us out so that we lose our authority. Mm -hmm. You can go right back to Genesis and see that in Genesis 1, 27 and 20, uh, 26 and 27, the, the Lord gave man, Adam and Eve, who he created, male and female in his image. He gave them authority over the earth, okay? And the enemy came in with a different philosophy. And he actually, it's humanism. Yeah. It's really crazy, <laughs> uh, but it is. It is. It is um, you are as smart as God, you know, and what God really fears, he says to Eve, he knows if you eat of that tree mm. of the knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like him. Okay, and so she did, she shared, Adam was there present. Mm. And so the boundaries that God had put them in, they were kicked out of and they lost authority, amen? And amen. it was given uh, to the enemy. It's interesting to me, I had never really thought about this, but the enemy himself had a spear of authority in heaven. Lucifer was the cherub that covered, if you remember. Mm -hmm. He was, a, he led worship. He was the one that was made up of pipes, it says. All the instruments. All the instruments were within him. And his uh, purpose was to worship the Lord. And let's just take a quick look at Isaiah 14. Oh, I'm in Genesis 14. Isaiah would be better. Mm -hmm. Let's see, Isaiah 14. And it starts in um, verse 13. And well, I'm gonna start up in verse 12. Mm -hmm. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weak, didst weaken the nations? My goodness, okay? Ooh, that's so good. no kidding, Adam falls. Uh, of course, Satan fell first, yeah, okay? Yeah. And, try, and so then he had to get man out of his place so that he would have a place to dominate, a dominion. Um, kingdom yeah. is a place where a king, king's domain is, and he has dominion over his subjects. So we're talking about the difference between God's kingdom and staying within the boundaries of God's kingdom and your sphere of authority and being sons of God now restored, being heirs uh, to the throne, so mm -hmm. to speak. We extend the kingdom. Jesus said, I must be about my father's business, mm -hmm. kingdom business, okay? So anyway, he says, how thou hast fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will set upon mm -hmm. the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. That is such a picture in a sense of who he is, what he carries, mm -hmm. and his attack on Eve is a perfect picture. It says the serpent was more subtle, the subtleness of the serpent, if you'll remember. He was subtle. He comes subtly often. And he comes um, to just get a foothold. It says uh, of the fullness of our heart, our mouth speaks. And he had so many I wills in there. He did. He did. It was all about I will. Yeah. I will. He's already decided in his heart what he wanted. Amen. And that's where we see uh, society when they throw off all restraint. Yeah. Um, and when the church decides to agree with God here on these things, and just say, well, these are uh, too difficult yeah. um, because of societal norms now. We can relax on we those. We can relax. The enemy will get a foothold. Uh, and he does get a foothold. He, he never just takes a, a, a tiny crack. And as I said at the beginning of this program, uh, anger. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Mm -hmm. Unresolved uh, un unforgiveness mm -hmm. gives a wedge, but so does aligning your thoughts with the enemy. We have, good, to, yeah, we have to stay aligned. We'll lose 
our sphere of influence. We can lose uh, our influence and authority over our family mm -hmm. if we don't as, as mothers and dads. So true. You know, yeah. good moms and dads set boundary for their kids, don't they? They need them. Yeah, but if moms and dads don't stay within any boundaries themselves, yeah. if, if they are their own God and their kids are really, really sharp, they are sensitive mm -hmm. to truth and injustice, and it will embitter them. And you they'll know, throw off all restraints. And they throw off all restraints, amen. That's so, cool. you know, the Lord is just calling us back, and there is an intense battle, I believe, always has been, but uh, going on, you can see it in our nation. Mm -hmm. so, you can see yeah. it in our nation. You could see the rage uh, on, uh, in what we witnessed in the last few weeks. Uh, you could, even within our senators, mm. you could see uh, where our laws and our nation has gotten to. So if the church will come back to the ways of God and be the light and the example uh, that we're to be, we'll be an effective church again. I want us to look real quickly at Jeremiah 6, 16, because I felt like that was a, a scripture that the Lord wanted us to look at today. It's that scripture that says, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways. It's like we're at a crossroad and see and ask for the old paths, the ancient paths. Where is the good way? and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So mm -hmm. I believe, and, and, and as I said previously, walking within, God is good. He loves us. Yes, he does. He has the best intentions in, in, in his heart for us. He gives, he gave laws for people to stay healthy, to prosper, to have good families, to That's prosper it. in business. And we've gotten off the mark to some degree. And I believe God is calling us back uh, to the ancient paths. Look at Jeremiah 18, uh, verse 15. Because my people have forgotten me, they've burned incense to vanity and they've and have caused them to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in paths in a way not cast up. So God is saying, because the pe my people have forgotten me, they're burning incense to vanity, vain thoughts, thoughts that lift themselves up yeah. uh, above the knowledge of God. And the Lord has told us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Well, that's just a start. Um, God is not legalistic. He is a liberator. Uh, any word, any law that he gives... Uh, and he narrowed it down in the New Testament. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, yeah. all your mind, all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. We have to get back to that. So, Peg, thanks for being here for this thank first you. session, and thank you for watching us today on the journey. Find me looking for you all through.